Well, Mr Speaker, they want more, so let me continue. Ferry Hall School in County Durham was on Labour's building list in 2010. They scrapped it, and now children there are in a crumbling school. The truth is, this crisis is the inevitable result of 13 years of cutting corners, botched jobs, sticking plaster politics. It's the sort of thing you expect from cowboy builders, saying that everyone else is wrong, everyone else is to blame, protesting they've done an effing good job, even as the ceiling falls in. The difference, Mr Speaker, is that in this case, the cowboys are running the country. Isn't he ashamed that after 13 years of Tory government, children are cowering under steel supports, stopping their classroom roof, falling in? No more. Just seriously, I will calm down. First session, I understand people are excited to be back at school. Will we expect better behaviour, Prime Minister? Well, Mr Speaker, this is exactly the kind of political opportunism that we've come... Exactly the kind of opportunism that we've come to expect from Captain Hindsight over here. Before, before today, before today, he's never once raised this issue with me across this dispatch box. It wasn't even worthy of a single... It's the same for this side as well. Can I just say, we're going to have a calmer question times going forward. I want to hear the question, I want to hear the answer, just like your constituents, Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, before today, he never once raised this issue with me in Parliament. It wasn't even worthy of a single mention in his so-called landmark speech on education this summer. And if we'd listened to him, our kids would have been off school and locked down for longer. It's as simple as that. He talks about 13 years. Well, let's see what happened. When we, in, when we came into office, two-thirds of school were good and outstanding. Now it's 90 per cent, Mr Speaker. We introduced the pupil premium to get more funding to the most disadvantaged pupils, Mr Speaker. Today they are 75 per cent more likely to go to university. And as a result of our reforms, we now have the best readers in the Western world, Mr Speaker. What 13 years of education reform gets you, all of which opposed by the party opposite. Well, it claims to be a man of detail. There are 100 parliamentary questions from this side on this issue and an opposition day motion. But, Mr. Speaker, let us continue. Holy Family Catholic School in Bradford was on the Labour building list in 2010. They scrapped it, and now children there too are in a crumbling school. Um, Mr. Holden, I think I've heard enough. No, then, this is the last time you make your mind up. You either go now or you're quiet for the rest of this. And, Mr. Speaker, if you can believe it, in April this year, the Education Secretary signed a contract for refurbishment of her offices. It's got a personal stamp of approval on it. It cost, I can't quite believe this, £34 million. Can he explain to parents? whose children aren't at school this week, why he thinks a blank cheque for he Tory minister's office is better use of taxpayers' money than stopping schools collapsing. Well, Mr Speaker, what I'd say to parents is, in the receipt of new information, we have acted decisively to ensure the safety of children and minimise disruption to education, as we have laid out and communicated extensively. That is the right thing to do. And I would also gently point out to him, Mr Speaker, whilst the Department for Education started this process 18 months ago in spring of last year, as far as I can tell, in Labour-run Wales, they still don't know which schools are affected, Mr Speaker. But again, he brought up this issue of funding, Mr Speaker. And again, let's look back to what happened in that spending review. Because in that spending review, I increased the Department for Education's capital budget by 25% to a record £7 billion, Mr Speaker. It tripled the amount that we spend on children with special education needs and disabilities. It improved the condition of the overlooked FE estate, and it set the course for per-pupil funding to be the highest ever. But it also, Mr Speaker, crucially, invested £5 billion to help our pupils recover the lost learning from COVID. £5 billion, Mr Speaker, and he might remember that, because he, we wanted pupils learning, he wanted longer lockdowns. Yeah. 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 
I, don't, I think he just doesn't get how this it's all fine out there yeah. is so at odds with the lived experience of millions of working people across this country. And Mr Speaker, let's go on. This is a long list. At least, six, at least six schools in Essex were on Labour's building list in 2010. They scrapped them and now children there are in crumbling schools. What he won't admit is the reason he cut these budgets, ignored the warnings, is quite simple. Just like he thought his tax rises were for other families to pay, he thinks his school cuts are for other families to endure. Doesn't it tell you everything you need to know? That he's happy to spend billions of taxpayers' money sprucing up Tory offices, billions to ensure there's no VAT on Tory school fees, but he won't lift a finger when it comes to protecting other people's schools, other people's safety, other people's children. Mr Speaker, I, I know he comes here with these prepared scripts, but he hasn't listened to a single fact. A single fact of six questions about the record amounts of funding going into schools, about the incredible reforms to education impacting the most disadvantaged children in our society, a record that we are rightly proud of. And yes, of course, he can, of course we can name the schools. That's because we are reacting to information and publishing that information, Mr Speaker, so we know where the issues are, something that we're still waiting for by the Welsh Government in Wales. But Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, of course he wants to try and score political points of something that we are dealing with in the right and responsible way. But I do note that he has not mentioned a single other thing that has happened since we last met across these dispatch boxes, Mr Speaker. He talked about hard-working families across Britain, but what's happened? Energy bills, down, Mr Speaker. What's happened to inflation? Down, Mr Speaker. What's happened to small boat crossings? Down, Mr Speaker. And when it comes, Mr Speaker, and when it comes to economic growth, what's happened? It's gone up, Mr Speaker. He tried, he tried time and time again to talk down the British economy, but people weren't listening, thankfully. His entire economic narrative has been demolished, and the Conservatives are getting on delivering for Britain.